Hi, Fudge here with part 6 of the Dark Souls 3 Anderson tutorial. Uh, this is going to be Teardrop 2. In this video I'll go over all of the safe strats for uh, for Teardrop 2. I'm also going to put up a video with uh, like the, the actual speedrun strats going on. And I'll comment on that, like what you're going to be looking for. But in this one I'll particularly go over what makes things work and not, and a lot of backup strats that you can use to avoid uh, to avoid enemies. So right now I'm in Firelink after killing Yorm, I've done the chopping, so you're gonna go back and you're gonna go to Irithyll of the Boreal Valley. It's gonna be the default bonfire unless you got some safety bonfires, so make sure if you do get safety bonfires which one you go to. First thing you need to do is you need to switch over to your keyboard because there is a precise jump you need to do. I'll go ahead and show the lineup for that. So right here, I'm going to put up, put away my weapons. There is a star formation on the ground. It's to the left of my foot. Right here, I'm going to put my cursor on it. Right here, you want to stand to the right of this with your left foot right next to it. So you want to get as close to that as possible with your left foot. This is going to be fine like this. So next up is where you're going to put your head. So the head is going to be where your camera goes for the lineup. There is a brighter piece of rocks over, over here. Uh, stands out from the rest. You can put your head right on top of it. Uh, you press escape. This locks your camera so that you, moving around your mouse no longer moves your camera. When you're ready to, do, when you're ready to do the jump, you're going to take the menu away. So you're going to be sprinting and then jump. So you want to practice that a couple times. Uh, make sure you get the timing down. And then here, I'm currently in a death cam, so you need to reload the game to get rid of it. Uh, next thing now is you're going to do spell swap to uh, so you can do teardrop. So do spell swap as before. Might take a couple tries. This time around you can't cancel any animations you get stuck in. So you're just going to have to stand there and wait for them. Okay, so now that you have spell swap done, you're going to want to line up with this rock right here. Put your head right there, and then you're going to hold Alt to force yourself to slow walk, and you're going to tap W so that you're taking tiny, tiny steps forward. So you want to drop straight down, you can only do that by tapping. If you're walking, you're going to push yourself off too far, and you will die. When you land, you need to start your movement by rolling so that you don't lose your tier. It's very important that you keep your tier. For this segment now, I've turned off the enemy's AI using Cheat Engine so that I can uh, fully show all the movements without any risk of things killing me, without things getting in the way. Uh, so if you want to see this with enemies, I'll link the other video. Anyway, you're going to move up here. These guys never hit you. It is super, super rare that they even get close. However, enemies in here might try to hit you. You're going to go to the left side and roll through these barrels. And you're going to go on the right side of the enemy ahead and up these stairs. Hold left of this tree, you can't squeeze through there even though it looks like you might be able to. So right here I line up to this tree ahead, the right one, and you walk straight towards that. And you're going to walk up the slope, or the slope ahead. And your height here is very important that you do not go too high up. You can go a little bit too low and you can fix that, but if you go too high up, you're going to hit a death cam, you're going to stop loading the game and you'll just need to use a homeward bone and try again. So the height here is very specific. There is a line right here, and you cannot go above it. If you go above it, you will get death cam, your run will suffer huge time loss. So you move up right about here, you see your tier? Your tier cannot go above this line. So then you're going to go right. So over up ahead, there is an invisible wall. This entire area is actually a wall, but you can't see it. So you're going to walk all the way to the right where you hit this wall, and then forward. So if you're too high up here, you're going to notice that you're going to get a death cam. But you're going to hold to left here, and then you're going to squeeze up on to this thing. 
However, if you don't have enough height to get on top of this, then there is a backup, which is over here. And you're going to take these stairs. And you're going to follow them, these stairs, just up the normal way. But I'll show you the speedway first, because there is some more explanation over here. So if you get on top of this, like you should with the correct height, you can move onto this piece of wall here, and it will squeeze you up on top of this ledge. And that will allow you to go over here. You do the same thing again against this wall, and then you can squeeze on top of this. Now if you do the stairs, going back to the backup strat, you'll come out about here, you'll be able to just walk over these trees and get over here. So typically the entire time, the Silver Knights will be shooting arrows at you, but as long as you're always moving, they will never really hit you. This guy will try to attack you, but you can roll whatever he does. The guy to the left will try to attack you, but you'll always roll that. Right here, you switch over and go on, to, on top of this roof. It's a little bit tricky, there's an invis wall coming at this, though not at this height apparently. You go all the way up as far as you can. Then on the outside, you keep running here. Go around. And you want to get on top of the unrolled stairs, but they're a little bit too high up right now, so you need to get more height. So, here's an important part where you need to have uh, almost full health. So I'm going to heal with Estes here. I suggest you heal with Estes as well. Make sure that you have about this HP. is really good. Because... When you walk through here, you notice that you can see my body. And when that happens, you lose all your health. And if you do not have your tier active, if you lost it, you'll need to either recast spell swap, or there is a backup. You do not take any damage if you reach over to this ledge instead. So instead of going up the one I did, you go up here. Then you won't lose any health. Uh, you can do it without tier, and you go all the way up and then just ahead. You need to make sure that you stay far enough left here. After that, you go up the Andalonda stairs. You hold right on the right side of the uh, lever. And make sure you don't touch the rail. If you touch the rail, uh, nothing happens. However, if you do not touch the rails, you're going to be able to sit at this bonfire in case you want to replenish your resources like I'm going to do now. However, uh, touching the rails doesn't matter for speed. But I'll go ahead and show you. Like If you touch the rail here, you're no longer going to be able to use the bonfire. So be mindful of that if, in case you want to use the bonfire. Here there's a guy who's going to attack you. He will never hit you if you just stay to the right. However, the guy to the right here he will try to hit you. If he does, you need to roll. You're going to go all the way up. It's important that you go all the way up these stairs. Because otherwise you will not get to the next area. This wall ahead is not a real wall. It's only there for decoration. You can go right through it. Next thing that's going to happen is that you're going to kill Aldrich through the floor. Um, because the, the game devs were kind enough to put a... Uh, tail on Aldrich. Now, if you go too far up here, you can't enter the room anymore. There's an invis wall. It's not very good. So what you're going to do is you're going to walk back and make sure that you get the right height from the start. So if you go too high, you just go back to these stairs. You can put your height back down. You can try again. So you want to go. You can see where the floor is about. So you want to go and squeeze yourself up a little bit and then go back down. So make sure that you're below. Use Gold Pine Resin here, and then it's going to be 52 or 53 hits, depending on if you have 28 or 29 luck. So what you do is, you do your 5 hits, you immediately start moving so that stamina region starts as soon as possible, you wait for almost a full bar, and then you do 5 hits. If you lose count, you can see the health bar on top of Aldrich here. Takes a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
when you finish killing Aldrich, the game will want to teleport you to the Dancer Arena. But because we've killed Emma, so that Dancer is already active, you will end up outside the arena. That's the first thing. The second thing is, to teleport, you need to either exist in Aldrich's arena or Yorm's. And the closest one here is going to be Aldrich. That's the kill. So what you're going to do now is you're not going to be teleported straight away after killing him, but you need to enter the arena. But you can do this from out of bounds. So what you're going to do is, you're going to ready to use the Soul of Aldrich like I have now. You're going to go over here, and you're going to start walking up. And about here, you set select yes, use the Soul, and then walk into the Aldrich arena here, and this will now teleport you. And for some reason, you can see the character while teleporting. So what happens now is you teleport to outside the Dancer arena, and you're still going to be in Teardrop. And this is really good because this allows you to skip Dancer. So Dancer's in there, you can see the sword. What you're going to do is you're going to go left, and you're going to go up these set of stairs here, turn around, walk around, you're going to walk on top of these statues, and then you're going to walk on top of this fence here. And this fence has a wall that stretches up really high, and it's invisible, so it's a little bit tricky, but you'll get it with practice. And you're going to do this set of this fence as well, more height. And you're going to go on the second arch here, you can squeeze through. This wall is just for decoration, it's not real. And then Dancer is going to be down there. Keep moving forward. You're going to balance on this fence, push yourself up the entire way. Then walk on top of this chair, then on top of the table, keep walking. Then you need to roll at the end to break through the, the candles. So now you are in Lothar Castle. So enemy is still inactive. These guys will try to hit you, but you can just sprint past them. You can see this if you check the other video. These guys, you will have to roll the second arrow. Now here is an interesting part. I'm not sure if the dragons will activate with AI or not. So what you can do is, if you're worried about the dragon fire, this has two versions. You either roll through the dragon fire and take a lot of damage, or you can move around it, making the dragons activate much later which means you don't take any damage at all. To do that, you need to get a bit more height so that you don't have to walk across the bridge. That's what I'll show you now. If you want to see the faster version, check the other video. So what you can do is you can move on these knights on top of this, and then all the way over here and go up here. This will give you a lot of height so you don't need to cross the bridge. And then the dragons will not activate until you put your feet over here. And now they won't activate at all. Actually, they do activate. Look at that. Even without AI, they still go. And you'll be able to reach over here, and the fire won't hurt you. So in here, these guys will throw bombs at you. They won't now, so it's important that you keep your camera on them. You see what they're doing. You roll if needed. These guys will try to attack you. Roll if needed. Next thing is that you're going to skip Dragon Slayer armor. Uh, there are two ways of doing that. You either go around his arena. In that case, you go up here, all the way up the stairs. You turn around, go around this, and you walk outside. It is one second slower than going through the arena, but there's no risk to it. Dragon Slayer does not wake up. He won't try to hit you. The other version is... Let's see if I can get back. The other version is that you go to the fog gate, you enter, and you stay on the right side. DSA will wake up and he'll try to hit you, and you will have to roll the attacks he does. You'll see examples of this in the other video. And then right here you walk out, and he won't be able to reach you anymore. He's going to try to chase you down, but he can't leave his arena. And if you go around, you simply just come up on the other side. Um, and it's very important that you light this bonfire, because you do need it later. And it's also very important that you pick up these items before you put your feet on the stairs. If you walk up without picking up the item, you'll, you can't get back down again. You'll have to quit out. And your run's going to be weird. Anyway, so this is going to be Grand Archives now. You need to go kind of fast here. And another thing is you need charcoal pine bundles. So make sure that you have those ready. Here you go left. Ignore this lizard, make sure to stay away from him. So, as always, there's no AI here, because I deactivated it. If you want to see what it looks like with AI, the other video. 
So here's a crystal lizard you need to kill. Put on your bundle as you're running. Stop. R2. And then three R1s. Oh, and make sure it's a charged R2. A charged R2 will flip the lizard over so that you get more time to hit it. Then you go back around, go up the stairs. This guy will try to hit you. What you do is, you walk on the right side of him and he will shoot his attack the wrong direction. Sprint, bundle, stop, charged R2. We'll flip the lizard over, three R1s. So, here you go about halfway up the stairs, you turn around, and you walk on the fence. You're going to be sprinting, of course. And then you squeeze your way on top of this fence, and you can go all the way over here. It takes a bit of practice, but it's very fast, so you walk on the inside of that fence, push yourself all the way up here. Run forward. These guys will try to hit you. You can roll if need be. Usually they miss. Almost at the top here, you're going to turn back, take a few steps back, go on top of the fence here, squeeze right, you're going to walk against this these candles, and then go over here. So here's a chest that you need to open, but it can be kind of scary, so you need to slow walk if you want to be really safe. If you want to be faster, you of course keep sprinting, then you want to open it. Then you want to pick up the item inside. Now let's say you accidentally touch the chest, you're going to be too high up to pick up any items. What you can do is, I uh, believe it is, is it here? Yeah, you can, you can walk against this to lower yourself in case you get too high up. And then you can try again. The other version, if you want to force yourself to slow walk, is that you can weapon art with a weapon. And that will make you also slow down while still pushing forward as much as you can on the stick. So there's a couple of different versions of being safe here to pick up the item. After that, touch the chests and then go over the fence. You walk straight across here. There's going to be enemies shooting projectiles at you, but they won't reach you. Next thing is you need to lower your height after walking across here. So you walk into the arch here for a little bit. Over this fence. And the enemies here are going to try to hit you. You need to roll if needed. Pick up that soul. Ready your homeward bone. And you're going to activate the elevator. And then you're going to homeward bone to the Firelink Shrine. And that is tiered up too. So thanks for watching and uh, good luck with your runs.